again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, let us recognize the readers, if we will. As the appointed scholar tonight, uh, my name is Donald L. Garbage Jr. Just to give you a small history uh, synopsis, if you will. My undertaking of this mission as Frederick Douglass since 2009 has taken me into the world of a man who, as read through the speech, uh, came to earth, unfortunately, in a slave encampment. But his destiny was to be a change agent, to alert the world that slavery was enforced, and that as an abolitionist, that his mission was to move forth in his life to alert the world that slavery, in its present tense, was totally wrong. The reading and writing of this speech, which you heard tonight, was basically to alert all of those who were uh, in those seats, if you will. And this was given to a ladies' organization in Rochester, New York. Now, we must know that as Frederick Douglass lived, him and his family lived in Rochester, New York, and the work and his mission was to, again, keep the word out there that slavery was wrong that he had escaped as well. However, keep in mind that the 4th of July was the celebration of independence. As stated, not for the black people at that time. The reason that the speech was not written or given on July 4th, but instead was July 5th, if you note was because that was Frederick Douglass' way of defying the fact that the celebration was theirs, not ours. In that speech, he also wanted it known that he was speaking on behalf of those slaves still in bondage in the South. And he wanted America to know that even though those slaves in the South were being tormented, that slavery was moving northward. And somewhere along the line, the word had to be uh, disseminated that we must come to an agreement that slavery must end. He thanks the likes of William Lord Garrison, who he teamed with upon his escape from slavery from Maryland to uh, Boston, Massachusetts. When he joined forces with William Lord Garrison and others to spread the word that slavery must be ended. And not only that, in 1845, when he penned the narrative, the life of Frederick Douglass, who the white population did not believe that he himself wrote the book, they believed that it was a white gentleman who wrote the book and just put his face on the cover. Ladies and gentlemen, I have you know, though Frederick Douglass was not educated through the uh, educational system, if you will, the colleges, if you will, the universities, if you will, he was educated through the slave uh, units that he, that he managed to come through the likes of Miss Sophia R., who took the time to teach little Fred, who grew to begin to teach himself, though through slickery manners, he learned how to read and how to master his reading to give us, in 1845, that book. And I can hear William Lord Garrison as he rushed through the home of Frederick Douglass on that Saturday morning, telling Frederick that you must pack your bags now and leave because you have mentioned your slave uh, owners. They will come after you, Frederick. And at that time, Frederick loaded the ship to Canada, to Ireland, to England, where he 
forcefully spread the words. And ladies and gentlemen, after two years of his journey in those countries, he come back to America a free man. Because somebody had the gall and the liberty to pay the 750 coins, if you will, to Master R for the freedom of Frederick. But keep in mind, the return of Frederick to America as a free man was totally not free because of the color of his skin. And if you read the words of Frederick and you read about his life past the narrative, you will find that as Frederick stood amongst the town's people giving speeches, he even still, as a free man, withstood, withstood the whippings that would be put on him by some of those who were sitting in the audience who did not agree with his words of his speeches. So, not to take up much of your time, but as I conclude, I would say and I would challenge each and every one of you all who are here tonight, not just you tonight, but take you from this place tonight and share what has taken place and continue to try to engulf yourself as well as those who are in your camp. I use camp. That means your children, your grandchildren, if you are teachers or educators, to continue to educate the masses of the importance of the work of Frederick Douglass and the ongoing battle, yes I said battle, that we as a people face in this society today. So, with that said, I hope I have given you a little bit uh, of a synopsis of Frederick Douglass and his life and why there is a speech such as This is not mine. This is yours. The fourth of July. Thank you.